With President Biden struggling badly in recent polls, particularly in critical battleground states, you would think Democrats would be open to the possibility of another option for president, even a backup, right? <laughs> think about it. The recent polls suggest if the election were held today, it might not even be close with Trump potentially winning in a landslide. But despite that, the state Democratic machines are trying to close off any other options for voters and are clearly protecting the Biden-Harris ticket. In Florida, they've already decided Joe Biden will be the nominee in 2024. No primary. Florida Democratic Party is actually refusing to hold a presidential primary. The move leaves any Democratic challengers, including Minnesota Congressman Dean Phillips, off the ballot. And as you can imagine, Phillips is furious. Just a handful of people decided to disenfranchise millions of Democratic voters in Florida by saying we're not going to have a presidential primary. And this is the kind of stuff that happens in Tehran, not in Tallahassee. I've never seen something so absurd, so disenfranchising, and so suppressive of Democratic voters. But the party is standing by the move and blaming Phillips, with a spokesperson accusing him of missing a deadline to get his name on the ballot, saying, quote, it was posted for months. It wasn't a secret. There was no conspiracy. They didn't get any votes. It's not our responsibility to whip for them. But here's the thing. Phillips didn't really miss the deadline. And this is about much more than just Dean Phillips. The Florida Democratic Party had until November 30th to submit any names to the state of possible candidates for the Democratic primary for 2024. Florida Democrats didn't want to wait. They jumped the gun and sent Biden's name as the only candidate on November 1st. And you have to wonder if that was connected to Dean Phillips announcing his candidacy a few days earlier on October 27th. So in theory, Phillips would have thought he had about a month to get into the primary. He tried to on November 7th, apparently sending two letters to the Florida Dems, but his campaign was ignored for weeks. The Florida Democrats finally responded on November 22nd, the day before Thanksgiving. By that time, the party said there wasn't enough time to give the state executive committee the required 10 days notice to hold a vote. So they basically figured out how to ice him out. Now, Florida Democrats are facing a lawsuit over the move. A Tampa attorney is asking a federal judge to step in and put Phillips' name on the ballot, calling his exclusion unconstitutional. Phillips' team planning on filing their own challenges against the DNC in Florida in the coming weeks. But look, lawsuits are tough to win. Just maybe is the Florida Democratic Party's plan worked. It's an important topic. We've been trying to get any Florida Democrat on the show to defend their move. We could not find a single one. We invited party chairwoman Nikki Freed, every member of the state's Democratic committee, even any Florida Democrat in Congress. We regularly have federal members of Congress on this show. Not a single one was willing to come on to defend the decision. But we did find one who initially said he agreed with the decision, but in preparation for this segment, I think he may have changed his mind. Joining me now is Jason Pizzo, a Florida Democratic state senator. He's also the incoming Senate Minority Leader for the Democratic Caucus. Thanks very much for taking the time. Appreciate it. So are we debating or are we agreeing on this one as of right now? On the, on the merits, thanks for having me, Dan. On the merits of, of the chronology of it, of, of being inclusive of other candidates, uh, I don't think I necessarily disagree, but it's, it's more the chronology and the timeline. Um, you're giving too much credit to uh, the Democratic Party being so calculating and so sinister as to be able to, to go ahead and, and, and protect uh, President Biden. Uh, Dean Phillips is one of nearly 1,300 people that have filed with the FEC to be a Democratic candidate uh, for the nomination. And really, that state executive committee, it's in statute. In a supermajority state like Florida that has all Republicans, it's Florida Statute 103. The state executive committee holds a convention, puts forward nominations, and a couple hundred people that were in that room in Orlando from October 27th to October 29th mentioned one name. Nobody else uh, from Dean Phillips' team or, or anyone else was able to, uh, uh, to get a name put forward. The, the reason why I, you probably say that I agree with you is because, you know, it. We started doing this in 1972, even when we had no chance of of winning these seats. And George Wallace, you know, the George Wallace days. But the disservice, I think, and what we miss out on, is I have in my county in Broward County six local races. Palm Beach County has 19 local races. 
and the Republicans are going to have a primary, and people are going to they're going to have great turnout and, and have a narrative on that. I think what we lose out on is the fact that it would have been a big draw, where we have pretty woeful turnout with Democrats performing in Florida lately. So thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find News Nation on your cable provider, and don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.